Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for you today. So a lot of you have been asking me for this type of video. Why did I start investing? How did I start? And how do I choose my investment? So this is exactly what we're going to do in this video. So sit back and relax. So I'm going to start with a little story. Most of you know I started to invest in 2016, but I actually got interested or my first interaction with the financial markets was way before that it was actually in high school. 2010, 2011, I entered a virtual competition simulation game by the biggest bank in Belgium. At one point, I was actually in the top 100, so I was very proud of myself, but that quickly changed because if you remember back in 2011, the uprising in Egypt obviously was something bad, so it crashed the markets. And obviously, it crashed my portfolio as well. Back then, I didn't really know why my portfolio went down, but I quickly made the correlation. Bad news somewhere in around the world is probably going to affect the stock market. So great experience. First part of the way I was doing very well, then quickly turned into something bad. Obviously I did not finish in the top 100, but for me, this was a good experience. Then fast forward 2016, started to invest and since at that point, everything I knew was value-based. So I read the books, Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, Benjamin Graham, you name it. Obviously, you turn into a value investor. So what does that mean? I'm going to tell you in just a bit. Now, why do I invest? Pretty simple. I want my money to work for me 24-7, 365 days a year. When I sleep, when I'm at work, when I'm on holiday, it doesn't matter. I want the money to work for me. That means that I will be able to retire early, that I will be able to maybe have more time with friends and family, build something on my own and help others. Obviously, this channel hopefully helps some of you, but that's the simple answer. Now, a couple of years ago, I worked for a prop tech company. I was still living at home, so basically had zero expenses. What does that mean? That meant that every month when I got my salary, I'm very honest here, over 90% of my salary went directly into my portfolio. Every month, same thing, got my salary, most of it into my portfolio, and that's it. Why? Well, because I had the luxury of having zero expenses and earning money. So why not put that money to work and eventually grow that as well? I understand that not everyone does have that luxury, but since I'm telling my story here, this is what I did. All right, so now, how do I choose my investment? So before, when I started, obviously I did not have the tools I'm using today. If I'm being honest, I did not use YouTube, I did not use Google, I barely used The Motley Fool, and I didn't have Stock Card, which by the way, is also the sponsor of this video. What is Stock Card? Well, basically Stock Card is a website where you can go and follow various portfolios, like myself, like Brian's, both brands, but let's focus on this channel. I will make a portfolio for this channel, which means that every time I cover a company and I feel it's time to add, I will be adding to the channel's portfolio. That way we can track our performance throughout the year. You can also follow my other portfolio there. It's free and open to everyone. Now, if you want to use Stock Card for your own due diligence, for your own investing research, which by the way is a very, very, very good platform to use. If you want to unlock all the premium features, you can use my code CouchInvestor to go VIP mode. And trust me, there is a lot, a lot of information there on most, if not all companies, and it's very, very easy to use. So again, if you want, link in the description, use code CouchInvestor. Now back to my story. Like I said, at first I was a value investor, which means I went to look for companies with a very low PE and a good balance sheet, which meant that my portfolio looked like Pfizer, Intel, Microsoft, McDonald's, and Monster Beverages. Obviously now went into growth stocks and my vision changed completely. Now going into growth stocks means that I have to take on more risk because most companies aren't profitable, which I'm okay with because I'm 27 years old right now I have a long-term horizon, so that doesn't really scare me. In the short term, fine, you can be unprofitable, but as long as I can see growth, fine by me. In the long term, 
I do wanna see that translation into profitability and still keep on growing. Now that said, I invest in companies I believe in, I invest in companies with good management and good growth. And most importantly, it's a lesson from Peter Lynch, companies that I understand. There's no point of me investing in companies that I do not understand. And that's also a reason why most of the requests I get in the comments, I reject them because a lot of those companies, one, I have no clue what they're doing, two, I have zero interest in following them, so I do not cover them on this channel. Might be companies that are very, very hyped right now, very hot, so I can get lots of views, but since I cannot educate myself, nor you, or provide good information, I'm just not going to cover them or even invest in them because there's just no point. So I hope that clears that point. Then going into financials. What about financials? Isn't that important? Yes, it is important. But as a growth investor, as a young investor with a long-term horizon, valuations, high valuations, doesn't really scare me that much. As long as I can see continued growth, I'm fine with that. If, yes, the stock has gone up 100% in a short period of time, then I might not open a position as I would have if the stock did not move at all. I might open a tiny position and work my way up and adjust accordingly along the way. And it's especially important now that a lot of growth companies aren't very profitable, right? Back when Tesla went public, had the same question there. How can you convince investors to invest in your company if you're not profitable? So take it from the man himself. What can you say to reassure investors that might have questions about the potential profitability here? Well, the, the, yeah, we, we do often get that question. Um, the, the thing that's important to bear in mind is that if Tesla just would just decided to be a, a sports car company and sell powertrains to, to other, other companies like to, to Daimler and to Toyota, we would be profitable. That's an important consideration. However, um, we're choosing not to do that. We're choosing instead to reinvest those profits and raise additional money to increase the, the production volume and, and produce the market. Yes, obviously things could have gone wrong, but that's the risk in investing in high growth companies. Now, last couple of points. I rarely sell during crashes. I almost always add to my position during a crash. Investing is simple. To me, at least, it's very simple. Those that want to convince you and say that it's not simple are probably those that earn a lot of money by taking care of retail investors. Investing is simple. I'm not a genius. I'm not a millionaire. Far from it. I'm a regular guy. And if I can do it, so can you. The only thing you need is patience and discipline. Usually both of them work hand in hand. And yes, I know not a lot of people have the discipline to be patient. But if you want to go into investing, if you want to grow your wealth, then this is something you will need to learn. And that's it. That's all I have to say. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. If you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.